Hey everybody. Um, to, uh, what I'd like to talk to about today is the phenomenon of common gods. Uh, there's uh, in the original Gold Box. Um, they talk about different uh, pantheons, like there's a Flan pantheon and an Iridian pantheon and so forth. But a lot of those gods are called common, and that's what I want to talk about today on Greyhawk Grognar. <laughs> So, in the original gold box, uh, when they give the big list of the gods and goddesses of, uh, of the world of Greyhawk, um, a lot of those gods are given racial origins. So there's a Flan pantheon, there's a Baklunish pantheon, there are Iridian gods, there are Sul gods, and so forth. But something on the order of two-thirds of the gods and goddesses listed in that in that uh, book are give are said to be common which means that they're common across most uh, uh, geographies most cultures um, and that gives us a couple of very interesting uh, uh, historical and and cultural things that we can add to the mix to really uh, make uh, the world of Greyhawk kind of come alive because it's messy you know and it, that I, that's what makes things um, really feel real is when they're not as systematized as one would like them to be um, now you've got a couple of different situations with the common gods um, there's one group of common gods that are just common that is they, they they don't have any particular racial origin they're just listed as common gods which means that they exist in the flan and the iridian and the Sul pantheons i'm going to set aside the Bacalunish just for now for this discussion because they are they're kind of on the periphery of the flaness and um, there's only like four Bacalunish deities listed at all um, on the blog side i have uh done a whole big thing about the Bacalunish pantheon and i've added a lot of gods and so forth um but for purposes of the dis this discussion, I'm just going to really be talking about the, the Flan, the uh, Iridians, and the Sewell. Um, <clears throat> so you've got these common deities, and it begs the question, um, you know, how did they how did they become common across all three pantheons? Were they always like that? Uh, did they... Did did, uh, uh, did the gods that are common just show up in each of the cultures in millennia, millennia past? Um which seems to be the case, um, but did that happen before or after the twin cataclysms? We really don't know. Um, it, it's kind of left as a mystery, you know, why do we have this big group of gods that spans these three very disparate cultures? But on the other hand, you've also got some gods that are common, but also have a racial origin listed. Um, and presumably what has happened with these is that this is a god that started off as say an Iridian god and over the course of of the last 1500 years after the uh, twin cataclysms and the and the big migrations into the Flaness by the Sul and the um, uh, the Sul, the Baglunish and the and the the Iridians um, where they encountered the Flan people who had already been there uh, in theory what it means is that those deities that started off as belonging to a specific culture became much more integrated into all the other uh, societies and pantheons so you have the a, 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 a a place you know you, you have a situation where the iridian gods you know certain iridian gods became widely adapted you have uh, the situation where all of the original flan gods uh became absorbed into the other cultures there are no exclusively flan deities they're all flan common uh, there are a bunch of Iridian common gods, uh, but there's only two Sul common gods. Uh, all the rest are exclusively Sul. Um, and we can kind of attribute that to the fact that the Sul have a very bad reputation from the Sulois Imperium, which was basically a big evil empire. Um, and the Sul people going forward kind of retained that reputation as being kind of nasty and haughty and, and so forth. So they might be a little too insular, they might be a little too too, um, uh, uh, you know, too standoffish, uh, too superior in their own uh, minds to, um, to, to, for other people to want to adopt their gods. But on the other hand, the Sul brought in all these other gods because they're common gods, so they're common to the Sul as well as everybody else. Um, there is one, uh, one very interesting um, 
uh, exception to all this, and that is Eula. Uh, Eula is, or Ula, is the uh, the goddess of hills and mountains and, and so forth. Um, and she's listed as unknown but common. So what that tells us is that we know that she wasn't one of those deities that just popped up all across the the flaness, you know, all across the flaness in or 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 near to the flaness in in centuries past, and was you know and was adopted you know simultaneously and unknowingly by all four cultures. Uh, somehow we know that she wasn't a common deity before the migrations. And yet now she is. So that could mean one of a couple of things. Does it mean that more than one culture claims her as having been theirs originally? So is it like, well, the Sewell say, no, she was she was our goddess before she was your goddess, and the Iridians say, oh no, no, she was our goddess before yours. Um, you know, we we don't really know what her pantheon of origin was. We don't know if she. Uh, we do know she didn't spring up sp simultaneously in all of them, but we don't know which culture she did come from. So that's a very uh, cool uh, mystery that I think you could uh, you could really lean into if you if you wanted to make something that was really rooted in the in the setting um, with this great religious mystery of the origin of Ula. Um, so you know, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, it it also we can also get some idea of what the original cultures were like from their gods. Uh, you know, when we have the Flan deities, for example, um, you know, you've got Baori, the, the Orth mother, you've got Nero, the god of death, you've got Pelor, the god of the sun and healing, you've got Rao, peace and reason. Um, these are all deities that are either very good and aligned with wheel and so forth, or they're nature-oriented deities. And that kind of speaks to the the flan culture uh before the the great migration started um and you can see the same thing you know uh, a lot of the Sewell uh deities are kind of nasty uh, a lot of the iridian deities uh, are associated with war and conflict and so forth um so you know so there's a, a and all of the backloonish deities are neutral um you know so there's a there's a lot of uh, inferences you can make uh when you start looking into the the uh, the, the deities as um cultural um as their cultural influences and their cultural origins. Um, so, anyway, uh, if you go onto the blog, um, the most uh, the the Tuesday blog post uh, covered this um, the same topic in a kind of different fashion, where it lists out all of the the different deities that are common, and then it breaks out the the unique uh, cultural deities. So, if you want, uh, the link will be below. You can uh, go check that out if you want to kind of uh, follow along where uh, you know and, and kind of see where the the, the the deities break out into their into their different um, cultures and so forth. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. I mean, does this sound like a, a, a neat approach where you can kind of add a little more uh, verisimilitude to the setting by things getting a little messier, um, where you can kind of inform the way the different cultures work based on what kind of gods they have and vice versa. You can, you know, there could be, for example, an Iridian version of a deity and a Sul version of that same deity. You know, it's the same god or goddess, uh, but they, they, they look at different aspects Aspects of them, they emphasize different parts of them. They look very different. They have different iconography. Um, I think that could be a lot of fun. You know, when you 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 come into a, an area of of big Sul um, uh, cultural influence, and they have a temple of a uh, of a common god, let's say uh, Neril, which is going to look very very different than a temple of Neril might look in um, in a in a, a, a place that is a, a majority Iridian. Uh, culture. So that's another thing that you could do to kind of shake things up and uh, give each land uh, its um, kind of a unique flavor. Even though you're talking about the same gods and goddesses, you know, there could be vastly different interpretations of those guys based on their on their home culture. So I think there's a lot of room that you could play with this and use it to, to really uh, make things interesting in your campaign. So let me know in the comments. Do you, do you agree? Do you think that's a, a neat idea? Uh, how would you uh, work with some of this? Um, have you done this kind of thing in the past? Let me know in the comments, and uh, if you enjoy this uh, kind of video, if you want me to do more of these uh, you know, dives into uh, Grey Hawkiana, uh, please uh, you know subscribe, hit the bell, uh, leave a comment. There's the Patreon uh, in the comment, uh, the link to the Patreons in the comments, link to my web store. If you like this, you can buy something, uh, help support the channel, and um, you know, hey, 
this is, uh, you know, I do this stuff for you guys. So uh, I, I, I love uh, to be able to do more. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, and uh, I will uh, talk to you all later.